First of all, let me just say that I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to be here and the energy that I'm feeling from yourselves is absolutely palpable and it has absolutely raised me another two inches in terms of feeling even more proud of, of who we are as a people, knowing that there are excellent people like yourselves out there who are so conscious and committed around the issues that are going to affect us globally. And I stand before you as, as a minister in a government where Ireland internationally will be, as you know, co-facilitating or co-chairing the negotiations around the Sustainable Development Goals. And if there's one thing that I felt in the last year or so, that is that the power of your voice has become more and more potent in terms of these major global challenges. If there's one takeaway that you have from today, it's that you, you go back to your own school and when you are continuing to advocate and to lobby, and one of your banners there was about lobbying your local politicians, please, please don't underestimate your own voice. Because for me, as somebody who you know, has a fund or spends taxpayers' money on those very global issues that we talk about, if we hear your voice coming through the ether, and knowing as we do that we want to, you know, meet that challenge of, you know, the 2030 challenge, if you will, eliminating global poverty. Think of yourselves 15 years hence. You guys are going to be the educators, you're going to be the technologists, you're going to be the entrepreneurs, you're going to be the scientists, the engineers. You guys are going to be part of that narrative that ensures that we can attain those goals. And what I want to do today is to take everything that has been collated and to work with Mary and, and the folks at Worldwise Global Schools and when you have your, what I call a synthesis report, that it feeds back in. So that when I go to meetings in places like Addis Ababa where I will be in July, where we're talking about funding for development or we're feeding into the narrative you know, when, the, when global leaders will meet in September uh, or you know, when they go to Paris or New York, that we start to inculcate the messages that are coming from people such as yourself so that they have a platform and a voice at the very highest level. You know, we have a major challenge. There are 192 odd countries, plus one or two maybe, that are going to be negotiating on these sustainable development goals. You could argue that not, not all of the Millennium Development Goals have been achieved, but we have to keep faith with this process. But remember, you're the global leaders of the future. Have you internalised that message? You are the leaders of the future. And if you can have that sense of belief and the wonderful way in which you've articulated that, if you can bring that with you in everything that you do, you may, not, you may go off and do other things, but as long as, at some stage, if you come back to these types of challenges, no matter what it is that you do in life, and if you have that global awareness and consciousness, that global passport, if you will, you know, then we're going to be an even greater country than we already are. The future is safe in people like yours' hands. So thank you. Mila Buichas, Asak Dungura. Kuramila Mahagas.